Alright, in this region's chemistry video, we're going to talk about entropy. So what entropy is, it's a measure of the disorder or randomness of a system. So what this means, basically, if we think about uh, a molecular structure, if we have maybe some, some rigidly arranged molecules, this, this would be very ordered, this would be low entropy. So the abbreviation for entropy is S, so this would be low S. Uh, if S stands for entropy and this is very ordered and structured, this would be low entropy. A high entropy would be something that's that's disordered. That would be more random and all over the place, kind of like if we had more scattered particles like this, this would be a higher entropy value. So if something is, is again, disordered or random or kind of scattered all over the place, that would be a high entropy. And if something is more structured or ordered, that would be a low entropy. So more disorder means higher entropy. So one important thing to know about entropy is that changes in nature tend towards higher entropy. So more entropy, more disorder or randomness is favorable. So what this means is that if, if a system has a choice of being more uh, random or disordered or less random or disordered, it's going to tend to favor that disordered state. Um, so that's important to know when we go to try and determine if a reaction is likely to happen or not. We're going to choose the reaction that's that's more disordered. That would be more likely to happen on its own. So again, higher disorder is favorable. So an important uh, vocabulary term here is the concept of spontaneity. So a, a process is spontaneous if it occurs on its own. On its own being the key uh, part here. On its own without needing outside assistance. So basically, if we need to put energy in uh, to kind of kickstart a reaction or get it started, that's not going to be a spontaneous process. A spontaneous process is going to be something that, that doesn't require outside assistance to get started, that just kind of wants to go on its own, it's favorable to occur, uh, that's something that would be spontaneous. So would a process that results in a decrease in entropy be likely to be spontaneous? Well, so if we said that higher entropy is favorable, higher disorder is favorable, uh, again, nature tends towards higher entropy, a decrease in entropy would be unfavorable. So if it's unfavorable, that would be not likely to be spontaneous. A spontaneous process is going to be something that is favorable. It's going to be able to happen on its own and not require any sort of outside assistance to get started. So again, if it's a decrease in entropy, that would not be favorable, that would be unfavorable, so that would be unlikely to occur. So you might be wondering why this guy is down here, this guy spreading uh, seeds. Well, in terms of spot, er, in terms of entropy, we could kind of think about if this guy has a, all these seeds in a bucket and then he kind of spreads them across, when maybe he's in a field or something doing some farming, he, uh, we want to think, would this be uh, an increase or a decrease in entropy? So if we think about the, the seeds in the bucket, they're all just in the bucket, organized, order, right? This would be a low entropy. And then once he scatters them, so this, this is the process of scattering these seeds, they're going to be scattered. This would be a higher entropy because they're more disordered. They're, they're just kind of strewn all over the place after he, after he scatters them as opposed to being all arranged in this bucket. So these are the types of processes you want to be able to identify as either high entropy or low entropy, again, just based on their order or randomness. Uh, so if it's more ordered or structured, that's going to be a low entropy because, again, entropy is disorder. And if it's more unstructured, disordered, random, that's going to be a higher entropy. All right, so in terms of the phases, you want to be able to identify uh, what the entropy of each phase is relative to the other. So if we look at a solid and a liquid and a gas and we think about these in terms of entropy, which is, again, randomness or disorder, we can kind of see here pretty evidently that solid is the most structured phase. It's the most rigidly arranged. So solid is going to be the lowest entropy of all the phases because it's very, uh, very again, structured, arranged, this, this uh, organized structure. And then liquid would be a little more unstructured. We've talked about these particle diagrams before. The, the liquid here is going to be a little more free to move around, right? It's going to be a little looser. So this is going to be a little higher uh, entropy than the solid will be because, again, it's more disordered. But then if we look at the gas, the gas is the most unstructured or disordered or 
random. So a gas is going to be the phase with the highest entropy because these particles are really free to move around all over the place. They've got a lot more freedom of motion. We're going to get a lot more randomness or disorder because of that. All right, so you want to be able to know that as we go from solid to liquid, the gas, we're increasing the entropy. So again, just because there's more disorder and randomness as we go from solid to liquid to gas. So that results in an increase in entropy. So if, uh, if the regions question here asks you that the entropy of a sample of water increases as the sample changes from A, and we look at all these answer choices, if we go from a gas to a liquid here, we're decreasing the entropy. So it's asking where we're increasing entropy. So that can't be it, right? Because gas is really disordered, high entropy. Liquid is more uh, ordered than the gas. So this would be a lower entropy than the gas. So we'd be decreasing if we went from gas to a liquid. Same thing with gas to a solid. If we go from gas to solid, we're getting way more structured, way more ordered than we were in the gas phase. So this would also be a decrease in entropy. If we go from liquid to gas, though, liquid to gas, that would be an increase in entropy. A gas is the phase with the highest entropy compared to liquid and solid. So if we go from liquid to gas, we're going to be increasing the disorder and therefore increasing the entropy. And here, liquid to a solid, same thing. We're going and becoming more ordered, more structured. So this would be a decrease. All, all three of these incorrect answer choices would be a decrease in entropy, whereas the liquid to gas phase would be an increase in entropy. And that's how you would come up with that. So again, just be able to identify all the phases in terms of their randomness. If you're familiar with the particle diagrams, this should be pretty self-evident. All right, so in terms of a chemical reaction, we could look at this as well and say, is a, a reaction going to result in an increase or decrease in entropy? Or would the entropy change be positive or negative? So if it's an increase in entropy, that would be a positive entropy change. If it's a decrease, then that would be a negative entropy change. So looking at this, we want to just use kind of the phases and see if we have, let's say with this first example, we have a solid and a gas, and then we're going towards just a solid. So we have gas over here, which is really, really disordered compared to a solid. And then on the right side, on the product side, we have no gas. So we're going from more disorder here to less disorder because we have solid and gas and then we go to just a solid so there's a lot more order here and less freedom with this gas so this would be a negative change in entropy so again we can just kind of look at the phases and see what happens uh, as we go from uh, the reactants to the products so the second example here we have sodium chloride as a solid going to sodium ion and chloride oh this should be aqueous as well so sodium ions in the aqueous solution and chloride ions in the aqueous solution. So we can kind of think about this. Remember the, the aqueous solution, we have uh, those ions dispersed in the solvent. So this would be an increase in entropy because we're going from a solid, which is this rigidly arranged structure, right? And then we're taking this solid and we're com combining it with the solvent and kind of dispersing all these solid particles into the solution. So a solution is going to be more disordered than just a plain solid is because, again, we're taking these particles that were rigidly arranged over here and we're dispersing them, scattering them in this solution. That's going to be more random than it would have been if it was just, again, in the solid phase. So more randomness, more disorder is going to be an uh, increase in, in, in entropy. All right, if we look at this next one, we've got two moles of... Uh, NO2 gas and then we go to one mole of N2O4 gas. So this we can't look at the phases because we well I mean you want to start looking at the phases but really they're the same here right so we have gas and gas for both phases so the difference here is which side has more moles of gas so if you have the same phase you're seeing which side has more moles of gas because if a side has more moles of gas a bigger amount of gas that's going to be more randomness they're going to be uh, more disordered, a, a bigger amount is going to be able to kind of fly around in that gas container more so than if we had a smaller volume of gas. The fewer particles that you have, the, f the less disorder you can have. If you have more, it has more of an opportunity to be disordered. So here we have two moles of gas going to just this imaginary one mole of gas here. So this would be a decrease in entropy or a negative entropy change. Again, we're just looking at the moles of gas here. So because we decrease the moles of gas from 2 moles to 1 mole, this would be a decrease in entropy. 
So if we look at this last one, we've got Ni3 as a solid going to gas, and this is going to be an increase in entropy or a positive entropy change because again, we're going from solid to gas. If we take this question and let's say uh, we change this from a solid to a gas, and now we have gas, gas, and gas. Now we have all the same phase, so what we have to look at again is the moles of gas. So if we do that, we have two moles of gas on the left side, and then we have one plus three would be four moles on the right side. So we go from two moles to four moles. Again, this would be an increase in the number of moles of gas. The more moles of gas that you have, the higher the entropy is gonna be because again, it's gonna have more of an opportunity to become disordered and, uh, and random. So this would be a positive increase in entropy if you look at it, uh, if we were to change this uh, reactant to a gas as well. So I hope this video on entropy was helpful. I'll uh, see you in the next video.